What is going on, Rotor Grinders? Kyle Murray here to break down some more NFL preseason. We are coming off of a Thursday night slate, which we cashed the under in that one over at Scores and Odds. Hopefully you guys tailed there and had some good success in the showdown streets as well. But now we have 13 games on Saturday. We're going to break down 12 of them as four of them are on the early slate for DraftKings and eight of them are on the late slate there over on DraftKings. We're going to touch mainly on the eight-game slate, but we're going to break down quickly to the four-game slate. So let's let's get right into it. Let's waste no more time here. Let's talk about here this early slate. Let me flip on over on Lineup HQ, which, by the way, all of our projections here, the first round of projections are in Lineup HQ now. We're, we are going to get some more news as, as Friday night goes on and as Saturday morning rolls along. So make sure you guys are checking on the updated projections as well as the core play and tiers article, which will be posted later on today as well. But Let's get right into it. Let's talk about these quarterbacks here for the early slate at the top. Tommy DeVito sounds like Daniel Jones is going to play half a quarter to maybe a full quarter. But honestly, I think that there is upside for him to play even fewer. Uh, and that would be more upside more upside there for Tommy DeVito. So uh, if we have a good drive or two for Daniel Jones, I wouldn't be surprised to see them sit him and the starters down fairly early. So Tommy DeVito has a solid projection here. Hendon Hooker, make sure we're checking out the news here. He did deal with a concussion last week. Uh, he didn't. He did miss practice early on this week as well. But he returned to practice yesterday, and then uh, Dan Campbell, head coach of the Detroit Lions, came out on the local radio station in Detroit and said that he was trending towards playing, which sounds pretty good to me. And this could be a spot where maybe the Lions look to make up some time for Hendon Hooker that he was, you know, able to miss in Game One due to that uh, that early exit that he had based on the concussion protocol. Just easily be a chance for them to go out and see him play, you know, maybe two to two and a half quarters. They did sign Jake Fromm, but overall, I think it's going to be the Hendon Hooker show there for Detroit. Logan Woodside looked pretty solid. He had a long touchdown pass to Jermaine Burton late on, late on in the game there for the Bengals. Uh, Jake Browning is dealing with a rib injury. He didn't practice this week, so it sounds like he's going to be out, and it's going to be between him and Rocky Lombardi, which is probably one of the cooler names there uh, amongst quarterbacks there for the Bengals. So, I give the edge to Woodside. We'll be interested to see who gets the starting nod, though, but make sure we're checking back in on updated news there. Patrick Mahomes, uh, I guess we'll, we'll touch on Jaron Hall real quick, actually. Jaron Hall, Minnesota dealing with some injuries. Um, it sounds like, obviously, with J.J. McCarthy out, they're going to pro- probably try to bring in somebody. It looks like Matt Corral is next man up to be brought in, but I don't think he's going to be ready in time for this game, obviously, as it sounds like Matt Corral was brought in. About five minutes ago, so about 4.30 Eastern time. So he's probably not going to be ready to suit up for this one. Nick Mullins and Jaron Hall likely going to split the snaps there, but Mullins didn't play last week. So I think Jaron Hall is going to get the majority of work here for this Vikings team. He played a little bit in the preseason last year, played a little bit in the regular season too. Didn't look all that great, but again, um, playing time is going to be king here for preseason, and Jaron Hall should have plenty of it. Patrick Mahomes is a big name to touch on here. Andy Reid went out and said that the Chiefs starters are going to play a full half. And to that, I respond with, I doubt it. Um, Andy Reid has been a notorious liar about um, Chiefs playing time for starters in the preseason over the past five years that I've been playing preseason DFS. So I'm I'm sure, I'm very, very positive that Patrick Mahomes will not be out there come the last whistle of the first half. Uh, I'm, I'm very confident in that. Uh, and for that reason, I, I bet Lions plus seven over at Scores and Odds. So, you know, that's one bet that I'm going to have in for the preseason game. Let's go ahead and check that out uh, in my other bets over at scores and odds and the rest of our teams, but Patrick Mahomes, five-point projection here. You could easily make a case for him needing a higher projection, even if I am right, and he only plays three to five drives or maybe even a quarter. I mean, if he plays one quarter, he could put up 15 fantasy points. <laughs> I mean, he could do a lot in very little time, especially against a Detroit team that's probably not going to be playing their starters either. Um, so, yeah, I have no problem with playing Mahomes a little bit. That does not necessarily mean that he's a bad play, uh, just based on the fact that I do think that Andy Reid's lying. He could play two drives, throw two touchdowns, and have 80 yards, and he could easily be one of the better um, quarterbacks on the slate. So I have no issue with playing Patrick Mahomes. Now, I do think that even though Andy Reid said that they will play the full half, I do think that there is very reasonable reasoning to assume that he could only play two drives. That is how confident I am in Andy Reid and his lying, uh, I guess, experience in the preseason. So I wanted to note that for the Chiefs. And I, honestly, coming off of the last week's game where we saw them play a couple of drives and Hollywood Brown suffered an injury that's going to keep him out for at least a month, I'd be, I'd be surprised if we see extended playing time for these starters here. So I do think Andy Reid's lying, and I think his nose is maybe growing a little bit there. But let's move on to running backs. Dante Miller, another spot we're going to have to monitor. He's dealing with a hamstring injury, but he hasn't practicing in a limited fashion. So if he's able to play, he should 
probably see the most playing time. Tyrone Tracy is going to be out for this one. Eric Gray was the Giants running back to kind of steal the show last week, but Miller had more touches, played more snaps, almost played double Eric Gray snaps. So if Miller doesn't play, Eric Gray probably looks really good. They did bring in a couple guys here. Lorenzo Lingard, who's not in the FanDuel pool, he is in DraftKings, and then Josh Kelly, who I don't believe is in either of them, um, either the draft, either the DraftKings or FanDuel player pools. But um, Miller and Gray would probably be the top two options for me. For the Cincinnati running backs, pretty thin room here. Uh, obviously, with them coming out and saying their starters are not going to play, I'm going to assume that Chase Brown is also not going to play. He played 25% of snaps, equal amount of snaps to Joe Burrow. Last week, it sounds like him and Burrow's snaps were in sync. With Burrow sitting down, I'm expecting Brown to sit. Moss didn't play last week. He probably won't play again this one. Um, so then you're left with three guys. After Chris Evans' season-ending injury, you have Travion Williams, Elijah Collins, Noah Kane. I prefer Williams. Uh, slightly over Collins. I think Williams is a little bit more receiving upside, but I do think Collins will play more than Travion Williams. For Cleveland, you have two guys here who also stand out, Aiden Robinson, or sorry, Aiden Robbins and Pierre Strong. Robbins, the former BYU running back. He had a touchdown last week. Um, I, you know, in terms of playing time, we're probably not going to see uh, a ton, like a big skew in terms of these guys, but I do think that we'll probably see a pretty even split between him and Strong. Chubb and Foreman not expected to play. Jerome Ford probably going to play a limited amount of snaps. He's probably going to be the RB1 opening the season, so they're probably going to be pretty careful with him. Strong and Robbins both played 31% of snaps last week, and I would expect pretty similar things there for them. Um, in terms of the rest of the running backs here, I do think that you can make a case for having some interest in one of these Detroit guys. Um, for me, it would be uh, Sion Vaki. Vaki, you know, he didn't get a ton of touches last week, but when he did have the ball in his hands, he was explosive. And that's not something that is too surprising. It's something that we talked about last week on the show. He didn't get a ton of work, so that was kind of a bummer. But I do think that we see him maybe earn a few more touches based on his performance last game. So he's the guy that stands out to me in this next tier. He would be my favorite uh, option in this sort of next best tier behind the guys that we just discussed. Over to receivers, Jermaine Burton, Michael Woods, and Jamari Thrash are the three that are the tier one guys for us. In terms of the projections, Woods and Thrash both played 69% of snaps or more. Thrash is an exciting uh, down-the-field type player who I think is a guy who can make a ton of plays downfield. And when you're talking about um, having pass catchers who are going to have you know, valuable or quality targets, this is probably the best scenario in terms of quarterback play all game. Winston, James Winston, Tyler Huntley, and Dorian Thompson-Robinson, those are three guys who all have – Pretty solid experience in the NFL. Jamari Thrash had five targets last week. Turned that into three catches for 43 yards. He's probably my favorite receiver on the slate. Everything I just said about Jamari Thrash can be turned into the same sort of case to be made for Michael Woods, although I don't think he's as exciting of a player. He did have two catches for 22 yards, but only two targets last week. But he also played 74% of snaps. In terms of the Cincinnati situation for receivers, not going to see Jamar Chase. He's holding out. He hasn't practiced in like three weeks, it seems. Um, uh, T Higgins, not going to see uh, Andre Yoshivas. I think that he's going to be looped in with the starters and not going to play. Um, it sounds like he's very clearly the wide receiver three. Jermaine Burton was playing in the fourth quarter last week. He played really well, but he has a lot to earn in terms of his role come regular season time for this team. So Burton, I like a lot. Then you have three guys behind Burton who played quite a bit last week as well. Kendrick Pryor, she uh, Shedrick Jackson, and Kwame Lasseter. So I think all of those guys are viable in terms of just sheer playing time that they're going to get. They all played in between 50 and 66% of snaps. Pryor led the way with 66% of snaps. Last year, though, had six targets. Pryor had three targets, and Shedrick Jackson also had three targets. So Pryor would be my favorite of these three um, just because of the playing time, but last year did seem to be the guy to be able to earn the majority of the targets there. After him, you have two guys uh, from Houston in Xavier Hutchinson and John Mechie, who also played 48% of snaps or more for both of those guys. So they're going to be on the field quite a bit. Once again, it seems they're probably going to see similar uh, usage there uh, per D'Amico Ryans from those guys uh, on the Texans offense. And then you have Elis Jones, who found the end zone on the ground last week. If anyone's watching Hard Knocks, you know that he's sort of competing for a job, whether it be as a receiver, as a return man, as a running back. He's pretty much doing whatever he can to earn a job or earn a role here. Last week, he had six carries for 34 yards, and he went backwards on two of them. So he had a couple of long runs, including a 19-yard run, um, and he found the end zone as well. Um, actually didn't see any targets as a pass catcher. So that's something that I think is actually pretty interesting. So I think that could change 
Um, you know, just getting him involved in the passing game as well. Um, so he definitely gets an advantage uh, just being a receiver who's going to have work on the ground. As for tight ends on this early slate, that's pretty thin. I think Travis Kelsey is probably the best option on the slate. Even if he plays two drives, he's probably going to be one of the better receivers in the slate, or at least he has the upside to be right. Travis Kelsey could easily have one drive where he catches three passes for 30 yards and a touchdown, and there's 12 points. And you're probably not going to get many tight ends to even break double digits on this slate. So can definitely make a case there for, for Travis Kelsey. Kate Stover played a ton last week. He played 44% of snaps, saw four targets. So Stover's a guy that I think is interesting in a uh, Texans tight end room that is very thin due to either veterans or injuries there. Brendan Bates also played quite a bit last week, as did Zaire Mitchell Payton, and both of them project to play quite a bit again due to some thin tight end rooms uh, based on injuries and, and uh, starters sitting and whatnot. So those are the tight ends for me. Uh, I also think Jared Wiley is pretty interesting. Wiley's been making a... Uh, pretty big case for himself as the tight end too in camp. Theo Johnson also think, also think it's pretty interesting. They did bring in a new tight end to replace Tyree Jackson, who was injured. Jackson had a big game last week, uh, but he's been moved to IR. They did sign Jacob Johnson, who's more of a fullback actually, but uh, Jack Stoll, who was essentially playing fullback for this team, I think will just transition into the tight end spot. I think he could potentially play some. He didn't play at all last week. But I do think that with the signing of Johnson, they could maybe play Stola tight end a little bit more. So overall, tight end is pretty thin. Um, Travis Kelsey, Kate Stover, probably my two favorites, even though I'm still not buying that we see a ton of these Chiefs guys. Uh, in terms of defense, check the article for those. Um, you know, We haven't really tiered out the defenses yet, but check the article to get the full breakdown of the defenses and where we kind of rank those teams um, and, and according to the, you know, the rest of the slate. But let's talk about this late slate now. Um, there is an early uh, Baltimore and Atlanta game uh, for showdown. If people are interested in playing showdown at noon on Saturday, those two teams are playing. They do have some interesting spots. Those projections will be up as well. All right, quarterbacks here for the late slate. Trey Lance played a ton last week. He played 92% of the snaps. He ran for 40 plus yards or six. Yeah, I think he ran six times for 44 yards. My, uh, my dyslexia is kicking in, I guess. I, don't, I can't remember if it was six for carries for 44 yards or four carries for 66 yards, but I'm pretty sure it was four, uh, six carries for 44 yards. But nonetheless, Trey Lance, he threw the ball 41 times last game. He ran the ball, so he's going to you know, just naturally have the most upside there. Stetson Bennett played every single snap for this Rams team. He did throw four picks, but he also threw a game-winning touchdown, so it kind of cancels out, I suppose. Um, but he played a ton in the pre preseason last year. Dresser Wynn is the quarterback behind him. Wynn didn't play at all last year in the preseason, despite being on the roster. So D Dresser Wynn just has to have the easiest job of all time. He just is just there, just existing. <laughs> like he's, I haven't seen him play a single snap in the preseason the last two years. He just remained on the team. Um, so he must... He must be doing something cool in the locker room there. Uh, nonetheless, Beathard, Mac Jones, they're set to split the halves evenly with the starters sitting there for Jacksonville. That's an interesting spot for those two. I mean, NFL caliber quarterbacks. And again, for any receiver that might be getting legit playing time, those are two guys that have legit NFL experience throwing to them. Clayton Toon and uh, Desmond Ritter are set to also split the time there. Ritter played 42% of the snaps. Uh, while Clayton Toon played 58% of snaps last week. But this could be a spot naturally where they just flip the playing time and Ritter actually gets more playing time. So I definitely want to see who's starting in this one. But right now I'm still giving the edge to Clayton Toon. Adrian Martinez I like quite a bit in this one, um, just in terms of having a spot where you know we're expecting um where we're expecting you know playing time there between Martinez and um you know with Tyrod Taylor likely not going to be playing a whole lot. You know, Aaron Rodgers isn't going to play People keep asking Aaron Rodgers if he's going to play in the preseason. I just, I just don't know why. I mean, this guy's just not going to play in the preseason ever again. There's no, no need for him to, especially this year. Um, Peasley played pretty well. He threw a touchdown last week, but I do think Martinez is just the better fantasy option from a rushing perspective. And Martinez did throw for over 100 yards last week as well. Um, Sam Howell threw for over 130 yards and had a ton of attempts. He played 72% of snaps last week. For the Seattle team, I don't think they have any desire to look at P.J. Walker a ton. So I think Howell is going to be the guy. Trask should start, and Wolford should split the you know the, they should split the halves pretty even, evenly. I do prefer Wolford. He looked good as a passer last week, and he's the guy with the rushing upside. But I think Trask is definitely in the player pool as well. Trubisky still has a solid projection here. Um, does sound like Buffalo. We're going to see their starters for a, 
a quarter to a quarter and a half. Um, but Ben DiNucci was just signed on the 13th. So after Josh Allen departs, it's Trubisky and DiNucci. And I don't think DiNucci is going to be able to play a ton just because he's just recently signed. So Trubisky is pretty interesting. So I like Trey Lance the most. I like Stetson, Stetson Bennett after that. And as you can see, obviously, there's a big group of guys um, behind him that I think behind those guys that I think are all pretty strong plays. I think right now my favorite would be Malik Willis. He has the rushing upside. He should play. He could he could play over uh, a half of football here as well, but he will at least play one full half, uh, splitting that with Mason Rudolph, bare minimum. Between the rest of these guys, um, Adrian Martinez, I think, is pretty appealing here, especially if we get news that Tyra Taylor somehow isn't going to play or even if he's only going to play one series. Um, I think Martinez is pretty appealing there in that spot. So those are the two guys with some rushing upside that I think are pretty interesting. All right, let's talk about these running backs here. Boston Scott and Zach Evans, these are by far the two best uh, running backs on the slate here. Um, they don't have a really thin – or they don't have a really deep – running back room in general and they're being very cautious as they are every year the rams with their starters and their key players kyron williams blake quorum they didn't play last week that was not a surprise i guess quorum was more of like a i guess we'll see but i don't think anyone really expected him to play and then ryan rivers also didn't play so it sounds like he's going to be an important piece of this team from a special teams perspective and maybe he'll get involved on third downs here and there but nonetheless boston scott and zach evans they split the snaps down the middle 58 42 Boston Scott had the slight edge there. I wouldn't be surprised to see this number flip as well, um, but I do think that Boston Scott is the guy that I give the slight edge to. But either way, I probably am not building a lineup without at least one of these guys, and you can play both. Um, Tennessee also in a very similar situation with their running backs. They have three guys. Um, LA has two, essentially, unless they want to somehow play Ryan Rivers this game. Tennessee has three guys with Pollard and Spears expected to sit. They're down to Hassan Haskins, Julius Chestnut, and Jamari, Jabari Small. Jabari Small, I believe, from Tennessee. Interesting um, prospect there with some speed and, and some, some versatility there. So Small, I like quite a bit. Uh, and then Julius Chestnut, who came through for us a couple times last year in preseason. He had a, a couple big games there when we were touting him. So he has a special place in my heart. Small had 10 carries last week. 18 yards, not great, but he was facing, you know, a tough defensive system, I guess. I guess we don't really know uh, what their defense was necessarily looking like talent-wise, but the 49ers obviously always have a tough defense. Um, Julius Chestnut had two catches for 37 yards on three targets, so I think both of these guys are interchangeable. Um, you can make a case for Chestnut based on his receiving ability, but I do think Jabari Small could also be used in the receiving game. They just didn't use him, um, so Small is probably going to be the guy to play more there. Um, the rest of these guys, Jalen Wright had a big game, over 50 yards and a touchdown. Um, so I think he's firmly in play again. Ray Davis, pretty similar to some of these other guys that we've touched on in terms of their uh, the running back depth that Buffalo has, especially once their starters are done. That's a little bit different because you know, James Cook and um, probably not Ty. We probably don't see Ty Johnson a ton, but I do think that with James Cook likely to see um, you know, a quarter, quarter and a half after he departs, it's just down to three running backs. Ray Davis, Darrington Evans, Frank Gore. And I do think there's some you know, reason to assume that we probably would want to see uh, James Cook limited just because he's going to be very important come the regular season. But Ray Davis, I like quite a bit. He played 38% of snaps last week, uh, and I think he's going to be a good young player. So don't mind uh, targeting him there. Then when you just look at kind of what he did last week, he had five carries and he went backwards a lot. His longest run last week was one yard. So I think that they're going to want to maybe see some more out of Ray Davis. Five carries, two yards. It's a long of one. Yeah, we can do better than that, Ray Davis. We can do better than that. He also had three catches on four targets for 19 yards, though. Uh, the rest of these guys that are interesting, Raheem Blackshear and Tyler Goodson. I think those are uh, Raheem Blackshear and Tyler Goodson, probably the next two that I have a, a good amount of interest in. Blackshear will definitely want to get news on. Carolina was one of those teams, as was Miami, who we'll touch on in a little bit uh, in terms of the importance of seeing who's actually going to be playing in that one. Um, but Blackshear, Carolina gave us inactives, as in Miami. Um, so I will know for sure, more likely than not, if Blackshear is playing. But this Carolina team is really thin. They actually let a running back go in Jalen Sheridan, who played a good amount last week. And then Chuba Hubbard was banged up. Miles Sanders, I would be very surprised if he plays. Um, considering starters are going to be sitting. Jonathan Brooks obviously not going to be playing for the first few weeks of the regular season. 
So you're left with Blackshear, Boone, and Dylan Johnson. I'm currently giving the edge to Blackshear in our projections because I think last week they sat him because of the rain. They sort of wanted to protect him. And I think this week he's going to be back out there and probably leading the team in terms of touches. Blackshear has been a preseason darling for the past couple of years. So I like Blackshear quite a bit. For Goodson, Indiana, uh, sorry, Indianapolis, apologies. Uh, they're pretty thin as well. Jonathan Taylor's not going to play. Trey Sermon not expected to play. He got a hamstring injury last week. Then you have Demetri Felton and Xavier Scott, who both played fewer than 15% of snaps. Felton's kind of playing as a receiver here too as well. So he, I'm not expecting him to be you know, taking away a ton from running backs here. Goodson played 33% of snaps. And honestly, if Sermon's going to have an injury that's going to hold him out at all, Hull's going to be the RB too. So Goodson could potentially see a lot of work here. So I like Tyler Goodson quite a bit. On to the wide receivers here. There are some very interesting wide receiver um, news and, and takeaways here. So let's talk about these Rams here first. Jordan Whittington, Sam Wigless, both had big games last week in terms of either production or volume. Whittington had both. He produced and he had a ton of volume. He had nine targets, which is just like, it's like if you see 18 targets in regular season, that's what nine targets is in preseason. It's just like earth shattering, right? He had six catches, 74 yards, looked awesome in doing it. However, did project him as a pretty solid option. And if he plays, he will be the top receiver in the tiers article again. But there's a good chance he doesn't play. Last year, Puka Nakua played in, in the first game, played well, didn't play the rest of the preseason. Now, obviously, Whittington is not Puka Nakua. But when you look at how they were talking about Puka Nakua last year compared to how they're talking about Jordan Whittington this year, a lot of things sound a lot similar. So I wouldn't be surprised if Whittington doesn't play in this one. If he sits... There's a couple of guys that can stand up uh, and, and kind of be the next man up there. Wiggles played 54% of snaps, and he was pretty productive as well. He had eight targets, and that, again, another just like eye-popping number. Next next best option for the Rams for me would be Xavier Smith. Um, but that would be if, if Whittington were out, Xavier Smith would bump up into the top tier. But for now, it's Whittington and Wiggles in the top tier. The other two guys in the top tier are Seattle options, Jake Bobo, and uh, Derek Young, in terms of, again, quality of targets, if we're going to be seeing passes from Sam Howell and, and P.J. Walker, that looks pretty good. You know, these are both guys who have started the entire season or the majority of seasons in their careers. Um, P.J. Walker doing that with Carolina and obviously Sam Howell doing that last year with Washington. So those are two pretty good quarterbacks from a preseason perspective to see targets from. Young had 61% of snaps last week. And Jake Bobo, who was a preseason stud last year had 50 percent of snaps so i like both of those guys quite a bit young had four targets last week jake bobo also had four targets but only caught one young caught three for 44 yards so i like both those guys quite a bit going down the list a little bit in terms of this next tier cody thompson played 60 percent of snaps for tampa like him quite a bit xavier weaver from colorado was a stud last year in college like him here quite a bit as well he saw a good amount of targets and playing time last week for this Cardinals team. He saw four targets. He was only able to bring in two of them, but again, we'll, we will take that volume all day long. Malachi Corley had five targets. Uh, Westbrook Akine for the Titans. Like these Titans receivers, it's actually a pretty thin room, but in terms of, you know, if they're going to be playing a lot with Malik Willis, they're probably just going to be running the ball a ton. But right now, we only have a handful of, uh, I think, six or seven guys projected to play. For this Tennessee team right now, we're expecting Traylon Burks to sit. Kyle Phillips hurt himself in practice. We're expecting him to sit. Treshawn Harris didn't play last week. We're expecting him to sit. And then the top three receivers, Ridley, Boyd, and obviously DeAndre Hopkins, who won't play until maybe regular season week one. All these guys are expected to, to not play. Pretty thin room. Mason Kinsey played 40% of snaps. He's a slot receiver. Nick Westbrook, Akine, both guys in this sort of next tier for wide receivers. Um, both guys that I think are pretty interesting. A couple other names, Parker Washington. Again, he's the guy that I'm sort of choosing as the guy I'm sort of um, planting a flag on for Jacksonville. I do think that somebody's going to come out from this Jacksonville room and have a good game. I mean, you have Mac Jones and C.J. Beathard throwing you the ball for the entirety of the game. That's a pretty significant spot for preseason compared to, you know, you could have Nate Sudfeld throwing you the ball for the whole game if you're you know, Lions receivers. But nonetheless, I think Parker Washington's going to be the guy for me. He also had a 70-yard kick return last week. So who knows? Maybe he'll house a kick return for some added points there. Um, Lance McCutcheon played over 70% of snaps last week. So that's a, obviously a big number to see. Brendan Rice all the way down here played 81% of snaps. That was the highest number I saw 
from receivers last week. However, my my goodness, the Chargers offense just looks absolutely terrible in this preseason. I mean, you have Easton Stick, Max Duggan, and Luis Perez leading the way, and they all looked very bad last week. So those are the main receivers. Again, to get kind of a breakdown of how we're ranking out all these guys, make sure you're checking the updated projections and obviously checking the core plays article there. Uh, once we post that, that'll be posted by the end of the night. Tight ends, Jelani Woods, Pat Fryermuth, Tanner Connor. These guys are kind of in a tier of their own in terms of the projections right now. Pat Fryermuth, so for Pittsburgh, we're projecting uh, four series for the Steelers per Mike Tomlin. That's exactly what he said they're going to play. That's very specific, which I appreciate for Mike Tomlin. If Fryermuth plays four, four series and he gets four targets, catches three to four of them, he could be one of the top tight ends on the slate. Tanner Connor, he had four catches last week for 70 yards. Uh, he should be on the field quite a bit again, and he looks to be a pretty good pass-catching option from a preseason perspective. Jelani Woods, he was a guy that had a lot of hype coming into the regular season for best ball and fantasy. Um, he looks absolutely buried in his depth chart, which is brutal, but in terms of preseason, it could be a spot to take advantage of. Clearly, he's a guy who a lot of people think has NFL-level talent, especially as a pass catcher, but he just hasn't really been able to break through. But he should play quite a bit, as he did last week. Uh, and again, I do like this spot here for Jelani Woods. A couple other tight ends, Brock Bowers, probably not going to see a ton out of him. He only played 20% of snaps last week or so, 17% um, of snaps last week. But the thing is, they were using him very, very distinctively, right? They were moving around the formation. They playing him at fullback, outside receiver, slot receiver, inline tight end, playing all over the formation. He had two catches for 25 yards. Again, four and a half points for on a DK slate for a tight end. I could actually end up being pretty, pretty good. So um, Bowers is definitely in line there. Uh, Koontz is a guy that's interesting. He was a preseason hero last year. Whiteheart and Vokalek both played over 50% of snaps for Arizona last week. Uh, and then one of my favorite tight ends of the week, David Martin Robinson, kind of sounds like a law firm. Yes, I know. But he played a ton last week and was also very, very involved in the passing game. He had 54% of the snaps there and also had five targets here for this Tennessee team. So uh, sorry, three targets. Three, three targets, 30 yards last week for David Martin Robinson. And then a couple other guys who might like see fewer playing time but could potentially be more efficient. Dalton Kincaid, kind of the same sort of case that we were making for Travis Kelsey, where Kincaid, if he plays a full quarter, even if he only plays you know four or five drives, if he has three or four catches in that time, he could easily be one of the top tight ends. So those are the tight ends there. To get full breakdowns of these guys and, and some analysis, and rankings and tiers and core plays make sure you're checking out the article the article for the early slate will be up by tonight and the article for this late slate will be up no later than tomorrow morning so check those guys out make sure you are uh, letting us know what you guys think we'll be in the discord dropping uh, information for news and anything that changes throughout the slate so make sure you guys are in the discord as well please like and subscribe on the youtube channel helps us out a ton we do appreciate it and make sure you guys are staying tuned we have college football right around the corner. I think we're less than two weeks away now from week zero uh, for college football. We might even be less than a week away now. Um, I think it might start next weekend, actually, which is super exciting. But, yeah, make sure you're staying tuned for college football. Make sure you're staying tuned for regular season football. We have a ton of awesome content and tools for the regular season. So we'll be here for you through it all. Make sure you guys are staying tuned, and we will see you guys next time. Appreciate it.